up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Wherever you're joining us from, we're so excited that you can join us. Would you believe the tune is over? <laughs> and yes, today we come to the end of our summer series. Pastor Angie is coming in reloaded. But even before we get to that, we have some songs that we want to sing together with you. So please, join in and let's worship the Lord together. Let's go! This song says that we are a chosen generation. That we belong to the most high God. Come on, put your hands together. Hey! Is anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord? Yeah. <laughs> Here we go, everyone. Let's sing it together. Come on, sing. We are a chosen generation. We've been called for to show we sex
most high God. We are created in the same image and likeness of God. We are chosen and not forsaken. We are the first and not the last. And I don't know where you're watching us from. Maybe throughout this sermon series, you're like, man, forgiveness is a hard thing. Living a life of no offense is so hard. Our prayer is that even as we worship, that you shall interact with God and even present your needs before God. And the need that we feel in our hearts is moment is that we shall ask God to walk with us even as we proceed on with this life. Then indeed we shall leave behind the things that we we carried, the burdens that we carried and we shall strive forward with hope and joy knowing that we are walking with God and that's the desire, the desire of our hearts. Thank you Jesus.
our desire, Lord, is that you will lead us. That we shall never, ever find ourselves alone. The call that you're calling us into, a place of forgiveness and reconciliation, is not an easy one. But Lord, if you lead us and if you walk with us, we shall do it and we shall be victorious. So I pray that, Lord, you shall just take your rightful place right now and help us, oh God. We cannot do this without you. Lead us and we will follow. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and worshipped. And everybody say, Amen. everybody say, Amen. 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 Well, we still have so much lined up for you. So please don't go nowhere. In fact, this is a good moment to text someone. You know, put, put a comment on the chat, you know, and let's, and let's just worship God together. Today is going to be an amazing day. We, we're closing this someone series in style. Pasanji is, whoa, y'all are ready. All right, let's go. Hello and welcome to service today. I'm so glad that you're joining us uh, for service from wherever you are in the world. If you're visiting for the first time, welcome. I'm so glad that you get to connect with us. It's going to be an amazing time, an amazing service, um, and I hope you feel at home. For those of you who are watching our service from home, kindly make sure you, you get onto the link and let us know where you're watching from. Let us know how we can connect with you. We want to pray with you. We want to support you. We're so glad that you're part of this family. Well, every Wednesday we have family night. We get to go deeper and further in what God is teaching us in the season. So I want to invite you to join us every Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. Let's come together and be with the family and lean into what God is teaching us in this season. It's time to give. And I want to share with you a word that God has given me in this season, what God has been speaking to me about giving. So we're going to read from Malachi 3, 10 to 12. This is what it says. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. I want to speak a blessing upon you who is committed to tithing, who is committed to giving. I want to speak a blessing upon you who has been engaging in this season in obeying the word that has been prophetically spoken over us, that we will be debt free in this season. Some of you have been experiencing a lot of um, uh, devouring from Satan, where you've been singing, you've been seeing your car has been breaking down, you've been seeing your kids getting sick, you've just been seeing things not working. But as you commit to tithe and give to the Lord, I speak this promise that God spoke over us, over you. Father, I commit your children to you. I thank you that they're walking in obedience and giving of their tithes and offering and putting them in the storehouse. Father, I speak against the devourer. I speak this word against him. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you would surround them with your love and mercy. I speak a hedge of protection over their finances, over their home, over their marriage, over their children, that Father, you will surround them. You will destroy every work of the enemy upon them. I pray, Father, that you would cause them to rise up and be blessed because you take delight in your children. And so I speak a release of your blessing. I speak a release of your love or your wholeness upon them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello and welcome to yet another edition of the Fearless News Network. My name is Mary Ladowo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, we have ten days left before we kick off this year's edition of the Fearless Summit. And with each passing day, we have an increase in the number of people who are attending and the number of countries represented. In fact, let's take a look and see how many people so far have confirmed their attendance. 
Wow, all those guys have registered so far. Hmm, this is going to be the conference to attend for sure. But my guy, you still haven't registered. Sis, you haven't registered as well. What's going on? What's the problem? What is the problem? I'm sure the question you're asking yourself today is, what are we having for lunch? However, the million dollar question you should be asking yourself is, is this conference going to change my business, change my attitude, change my life, change my entire being? The answer is a resounding yes. Don't believe me? How about you hear it straight from an attendee who attended one fearless summit and her life, her business, her everything changed. Check out this video. My thoughts before the fearless summit were very more, you know, local, if I can say. At fearless summit, I got to meet a very interesting guy who just transformed my way of thinking. His name is Richard Esther, and he was talking, um, he was taking an afternoon masterclass about digital marketing, and I got to attend it. And I was just sitting at the front row. I didn't know that the message was for me, but on leaving that evening, I knew I had to action it. So my first step was just taking the vulnerability and the courage of shooting myself. It wasn't the best quality, it wasn't the best sound, and just still uploading it and knowing that there could be some uh, feedback that could be negative, but still going ahead to, and making that decision and uploading it. And right now, which is three years later, it's 150 videos on and just pushing through. Currently, we're incorporating other farmers into the association to have a better voice. What I would say to the marketplace leaders who feel that Fearless could be a religious <laughs> summit, it's totally not. It's mostly for people who are looking in terms of direction, entrepreneurship, having a network, having a community of people who understand each other's struggles. But for me, it's also a place where I found how to grow my purpose. Because the first thing is to find out your purpose, but then what is the next level? And I feel that's what uh, Fearless does for you. My name is Wangare Kuria, the farmer on fire, and I'm Fearless. In other news, I want you to take out your diary or your phone and mark a very special date. That's Sunday the 10th of July 2022. Why, you may ask? Because all Mavuno campuses in Kenya are going to be shutting down for one Sunday and congregating at the Mavuno Hill City headquarters for a unique joint service dubbed the Fearless Sunday. Now, if you're in a Mavuno campus outside Kenya, worry not. There's going to be a special live stream provided just for you. Details will be provided to you soon. Once again, I've been your host for the most. My name is Mary. 2,000 years later. Ladowo, and this has been the Fearless News Network. Goodbye and God bless. Greetings, good people. I'm so glad that you could join us this morning. My name is Angela Kimaru, uh, and I'm so glad you're joining us from wherever in the world you're joining us from. I'm so excited to be bringing the Word of God to you today. This is the final week of our series, No Offense. I'm telling you, this series has been amazing and legit. We are learning how to deal with offense. We've been letting go of offenses. Uh, and so far, we've learned so much about the dangers of offense. So let's recap a little bit just so that we can discuss, um, I mean, pray. This is a prayer service so we can pray with knowledge. So we learned that offense is a trap that the enemy uses to keep many from their destiny. We also gained perspective when we said no human, no demon can get you out of the will of God. That was one of my most favorite sermons. And it's a powerful truth, a powerful perspective. Then we moved into letting go. We're saying, how, is, how can we let go of the pain of, of offense that authority figures, that people with authority over us speak over us, whether it's our parents, our teachers, words that were spoken over us, how do we let go of that offense? The next week we talked about turning curses into blessings we said we're not going to repay evil with evil we're not going to retaliate insults when people insult us instead we're going to become a blessing to them and we determined to give blessings that week listen guys if you missed out on any of these messages you can find them on the mavono um, youtube page and catch up on them 
we talked about being planted. We talked about church offenses and said, we are going to become, going to become a people that are planted in the house of the Lord. We're going to bear much fruit. And we were challenged to connect and serve. The devil's plan is to keep you isolated. We said no more of that. We said we're going to cancel debt and forgiveness is a heart posture. And so, so we said that we're going to let go of offenses. We're going to cancel debt and be involved in reconciliation. So last week we talked about the details of reconciliation and the challenge was many of us need to take the challenge from just forgiving. Many of us stop at forgiving, but move forward and say we're going to now engage in reconciliation because God called us into the reconciliation business. Guys, when I started this series, when we prayed about this series, I knew that this message was going to be amazing, was going to bring healing to the church across the world, in all our campuses, even online. But to be honest, I personally didn't think I had any offense. I'm telling you, when I was preparing this sermon, from the very first week I read the first sermon, I burst out crying. I had a moment where I knew what God was going to do. There are various moments through the series where I would uh, I would sit to prepare a couple of sermons and I knew God was asking me to move to the next level. In fact, what happened is there are certain scenarios that I didn't even know I had offense and God distilled and reminded me of, of images. He gave me images and conversations that I'd had with people that created a barrier. And so when I realized, actually, I have offense and this sermon was for me, I have had conversations with people that have offended me. I have asked for forgiveness in various situations and God has just brought healing. I cannot wait to see what God will do in you and for you. One of the things that I'm privileged uh, to do is that I'm able to have conversations with various ones of us um, through this series and in various campuses. And so I've had conversations with people and what has happened is I realized people have so many real raw stories about how they're applying the lessons and the sermons. And so based off some of the conversations, I want us to share, I want to share some of the stories and then we're going to pray uh, and invite God to speak to us even as we go through the prayer service today. You know what I love about Mavuno? Because I love Mavuno. It's a place for real people with real issues meeting a real God. And today we're going to meet a real God. We're going to meet a real God. Amen. I hope you're excited to do that. So I want to share one of my, the very first scenarios, and we're going to then pray using that uh, scenario. The, it's about um, a person who had authority over someone. So there's this lady, she told me her, her story. We're going to call her Grace. She works for a multinational organization. She, she's in mid-level ma management. And the company she worked for had these unsaid rules about how to deliver uh, and land clients. And so what would happen is she would go to work and there was a lot of sexual harassment going on. And if you if you didn't agree uh, to it, then you lost out on promotions. And it got so tense because her bosses abused their power over her until she even had to leave empo employment and she suffered from it. She ended up having low self-esteem. She had low confidence. She hasn't been able to land a job and she's just bitter and angry. Maybe you're listening to me right now sharing this scenario and you're like, you know what, Pastor Angie, do you have my story? I'm like, many, maybe some of you have suffered unfair treatment at work. You've experienced abuse in words, you know, from people, maybe your bosses or people of authority over you. Maybe you've lost your job as a result because you wouldn't take a bribe. You didn't take a deal and you got passed up from a promotion. Maybe you actually got promoted for, for a job or in school, you passed your exam because you, you succumbed to pressure. But the conversation that we're having right now is, how do you let go? How do you forgive? How do you move into the space that God desires for you to move into? Well, I wanna remind you of one of the sermons that we went through, through the story of Joseph. And what I love about it is that Joseph's story was full of heartache, it was full of pain, it was full of unimaginable uh, a pain that this guy went through because people were uh, absolutely mean and, and um, what is it called? That they, they hurt him completely. And so this guy then came to a place where he was able to reconcile with his family because it was his family members. He was able to move into the space that God desired for him to move into. And so I want to pray for you right now that God will re renew your mind uh, even as you're in this space, even as you're remembering the injustices that happened to you. I want to pray that you would understand that this is who God sees you as. God sees you, God knows you, God loves you. And I want to remind you what we said in that sermon, 
no human, no demon can get you out of the will of God. I want to invite you into a space right now where you can in, we can pray together and make some declarations together. And I want you to say this together with me. If this is you, because I know that this is you out there. Somebody out there, this message is for you. This is what you, I want you to say. Say, I'm choosing to forgive you. I want you to name your leader. Say, I'm choosing to forgive you at this moment. And I'm asking God's help to help me let go of the offense that I have carried. I pull out any arrows of pain, words or memories that the enemy has embedded in my life that have taken root. And right now I accept the love of God. I accept the love and acceptance of my heavenly father. Amen, amen, amen. I want to speak a pastoral prayer over you. I want to speak uh, over you Psalm 23. This is what it says. For some of you who have lost your jobs, who are just feeling overwhelmed by your situation, this is what the Psalm says. It says, Oh Lord, how, how many are my foes? How many are rising up against me and saying, uh, many are saying of me that God will not deliver me. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield around me. You bestow glory on my head and you lift up my head. And so to the Lord, I cry aloud and he answers me from his holy hill. Father, I thank you because I know that you know this person. I know that you see these people that are broken, that have been in situations of sexual harassment, that have lost their jobs. Uh, I pray, Father, that, the, that in this time that you would be a shield around them. I pray that you'd lift up their head. I want to pray for that person that is looking for a job, that, Father, you will lift up their head. I speak to that person who is experiencing deep anxiety because of the situation that they're in, that they are currently in a situation of pain. I pray, Father, a release upon them, that they will lay down their head and rest because the Lord will sustain them, that they will rest because tens of thousands will not rise up against them. They will fall on every side because you, O oh Lord, will arise and deliver them. You will strike their enemy on the jaw. You, O oh Lord, will bring deliverance and blessing to them. In Jesus' name, I pray and all God's people say, amen, amen, amen. I love it. I love it. God is bringing release to us. The second scenario, because I'm telling you, I've had so many stories. In my campus south, we love stories. <laughs> and so I want to share with you a couple of stories that have been coming to me throughout this series. The second story is about a gentleman. This guy has loved the sermons, but he's been saying to me, listen, you don't understand what's going on in my marriage. He doesn't know how to apply this message of forgiveness and reconciliation in his marriage. He's been married for about eight years, but he's been dealing with verbal abuse from his wife. The wife is controlling and manipulative. And so he finds it hard to forgive because the situation is not changing. In fact, he says his wife doesn't even recognize that she has done anything wrong. So he says, how do you even consider reconciliation in such a situation? Maybe you're listening to this. Maybe somebody has even sent you this link knowing that this morning you've broken up from a situation of abuse. You've come into the church of God. You've come to hear from him, but you're, you're in a situation of pain and abuse. This is your reality. You're in an abusive marriage. The behavior is ongoing. Your husband is cheating on you. Your wife is, is, is manipulative, or maybe she's even cheating on you. But I want to remind you what we said last week. We said forgiveness involves one party. Reconciliation is what takes two. God commands you to forgive from the heart. And I want to invite you into a space where you journey and connect with God genuinely to forgive them from the heart. I know that this is hard. I know that what I'm asking you to do in your moment of pain is difficult. I know that, for, and I want to remind you, forgiveness is unconditional but reconciliation is conditional. The story that we read through last week, or we talked about last week, was through the story of Esau. Esau and his brother Jacob, they, rec they reconciled, but they didn't uh, live together. They didn't engage together. And so I don't know what your story is. What I want to encourage you to do is today, right now, write into us if you're in a situation where you feel stuck, you're in a situ situation where you s feel frustrated and in pain and you're unable to get out of it, I want to encourage you, write into us. If you're in a, in a campus, go up to your pastor and say, I need help. If you have access to a counselor, go and seek professional help so that then you can make an informed decision about what reconciliation looks like for you what peace looks like for you, the direction that God desires for you to go into. But my friend, God says, I want you to reconcile. I want you to forgive from the heart. 
change in behavior is what leads to reconciliation. So let me be clear. What we're saying is change in behavior leads to rec reconciliation. Reconciliation doesn't automatically mean that the relationship goes back to what it was before. It may mean that you move into the direction that God is calling you into. I want to pray for you right now. If this is your story, if you're in a situation of pain, if your marriage has been frustrated and is difficult, if you're, you're just coming out of a space of being abused, this is what I want to tell you. You need to begin to own and accept that reconciliation may not happen if there's no change of behavior. I want you to recognize that reconciliation may not happen if there's no change in behavior. And I want you to hear this right now from the bottom of my heart and acknowledge that this is the reality that you are in. This is the space that you are in right now. But God is able to speak healing and comfort to you right now. The place of forgiveness begins at owning and accepting that reconciliation may not happen just because there's no change in the behavior. But I want to acknowledge that God is able to bring healing, God is able to bring light, God is able to bring love to you in the space that you're in. All right, so now I want to pray uh, over you. I want to speak the, the healing of God into your marriage, into your, into your relationship. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. I, I speak your heart, I speak your life, I speak your peace over this marriage. I want to pray, Father, for wisdom and courage for this person that is in that situation. I want to pray, Father, that you'd help them to get a counselor. I want to pray, Father, that you direct their steps to somebody who can encourage them and build them up. I want to pray, Father, that your hand would be upon them. I want to speak your peace into that home, into that marriage. I want to invite you right now to make this declaration with me. Insert the name of the spouse right now. Say, I am choosing to forgive you at this moment. And I'm asking God's help to help me let go of the offense that I have carried. I want you to make this declaration with me. I refuse to let bitterness and resentment take root in my heart. Father, I'm trusting you to heal my marriage. I'm trusting you to heal my home. Father, I speak your healing into that home. I speak that, Father, you would illuminate their life with God's word. I pray over that man and that woman that you'd strengthen their bones. I speak healing and I speak forgiveness and transformation in the name of Jesus in that home, that you would lead them to experience life wholly and fully as you desire for them to experience it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, so the third scenario that we're going to go into is one where our, of relationship and friendship. Um, like I said, I have many stories. People come up to me with their stories, but I'm so excited because at Mavuno, we are real people with real issues meeting a real God. So I had lunch with this guy a couple of weeks ago, and this guy was telling me how he had been betrayed by a very close friend who was like a brother. And so um, what happened is he, this friend had a business deal and he cut him into the business deal uh, and told him, you guy, I'm go we're going to make money together. We're going to do this. And so they invested together, but the deal went south. But his friend didn't tell him that the deal was going south. And so he didn't save his money, but his friend did. And so now he's stuck in debt. He can't even stand to be in the same place as that guy. So when he heard this message of forgiveness, he told me, Pastanji, you don't get it. I cannot stand that person. I'm in debt. My, my children are not going to school because of this person. How can you tell me? How can you ask me to forgive them? And so the, with this, this conversation became so real to me because I was thinking maybe you have a close friend or a family member that stole from you. Maybe you invested with a friend and they ran off with your money. Uh, maybe you're even going to the same church right now, but you can't stand to meet with them. Maybe you, you hang out and you see them uh, at, the, at the parking lot and you drive off in a half because you're hurt, you're offended. But listen, God is asking us to forgive. God is asking you, in fact, to open the door to reconciliation, even if it may not happen. Now, the story of Jacob and Esau, I love it because the relationship didn't remain the same. But then what I want you to do right now, what I feel many people don't do, is they don't mourn what has happened in that relationship. They don't mourn the death of the trust. They don't, they don't mourn that, that things can't be the same anymore. And I want you to release yourself to mourn the loss of that friendship. I want you to release yourself to, say, to pray for courage, to maybe even let that person go, uh, and then say, Father, if you desire for us to be in a, a relationship well and good, 
or if it is more healthier for you to be away from them then to release yourself to be in that space but i want to invite you into a space where you make a declaration with me i want you to insert the name of your friend or your business partner and, and i want you to say these words with me so just say the name of your friend or your business pastor, partner and say i'm choosing to forgive you at this moment i'm asking god's help to let go of the offense that i have carried against you I refuse to let bitterness and resentment take root in my heart. And I want you to remind yourself, no human, no demon can ever get me out of the will of God. Whatever it is that you invested, whatever it is that you gave, we are in a covenant with God, creator of the heavens and the earth. He will provide for you. And so I speak a release over you right now, that even as you let that person go, even as you let go of that offense, that the Lord will walk into your life walk into your business, walk into your finances, walk into your relationship and bring healing and wholeness right now. Father, I speak over that man, over that woman whose relationship has been torn, who's not been able to move forward in their finances because of this debt. But I thank you that you gave us a word at Mabuno that by, the, by September this year we will be out of debt. I want to pray for courage and boldness over this man and woman to trust you, God, that you will get them out of this debt. I want to pray for divine and miraculous provision. I want to pray for somebody who is hearing me right now and is convinced to cancel the debt over their friend and to release them and to no longer hold them uh, to, to, to account for this situation. I thank you that you are convicting their hearts to release them. And so I speak courage and boldness. I pray that you'd help them to confront the issue and move forward in, in peace and in wholeness and wellness. In Jesus' name I pray and all God's people say, Amen, amen, amen. Healing is coming to our house. Healing and reconciliation is coming. I cannot wait to see what God will do. Okay, so I have another story. I'm telling you, many people have come to talk to me this month. Uh, many guys have heard the sermon and they're like, okay, Pastor Angie, I love it. Uh, but they're like, listen, I offended someone and I'm finding it hard to go up to that person. In fact, there's one such person who, who came up to me and they told me about how they had um, their family was involved in an offense. So they had acquired property as a family and it wasn't in the, in the legal, straight and narrow way. And so what happened is that they ended up um, being in squabbles with the neighbors. So all the neighbors were ganging up upon them. They ended up feeling this was a case of justice. They ended up calling the authorities. But in the end, it was them who were in the wrong. But in that whole uh, mix, these guys had abused people. Words had been spoken over each other, uh, over people older than them. They are no longer talking to their neighbors. They're no longer able to reconcile. But the one good thing is out of this sermon series, they went and gave a gift, gift to their neighbors. But there's this one neighbor who they seriously offended and who actually holds stake the whole neighborhood. She has been unable to forgive them. And so nobody talks to them. They're not existing peaceably there. And they feel bound. They feel that this person, because they're not coming to them and they're not um, receiving their forgiveness, they feel stuck and frustrated. And so she, they came up to me and they said, listen, Pastor Angie, we're listening to your sermon, but things aren't changing. It's remaining the same. It's not moving forward and they're frustrated and it's taking too long. So maybe some of you, have, you've gone in obedience to this sermon, you've asked for forgiveness, but these people are not responding. They're holding on to that offense. Maybe you even went and the person insulted you even more. I want to tell you something that we've been preaching this month. And I want to remind you, forgiveness is for you and not for them. Forgiveness is one-sided. Forgiveness is unconditional. And I want to remind you, it's not about what you get in return. It's about obedience to what God has asked you to do. Now, I want you to be able uh, to even have the stance and the posturing for reconciliation. Remember, when, we, when Adam and Eve sinned at um, Eden, in the Garden of Eden, God already made a plan. He, he already set the right environment uh, for reconciliation to happen. He gave us the tabernacle, which is a gift for us to relate with him. So keep giving gifts, keep being kind, keep setting the stage for reconciliation. I know this is hard. This is hard for somebody who's trying to be reconciled with a parent who has not spoken to you in years. This may be hard for somebody whose family member has left you, members have left you abandoned for years, but this is it. Keep setting the stage 
for reconciliation to happen. This is what God is asking us to do. I want you to humble yourself and say, Father, this is my posturing, that I will seek forgiveness, that I will show kindness and posture myself to seek reconciliation. And I want you to make this declaration with me right now. I confess my sin and I ask, Father, that you keep me from stumbling. I ask that this act of obedience, even if this person does not change, will not keep me from stumbling. I am committed to your message of reconciliation. Give me courage and boldness to walk in it. Let us repeat it again. I am committed to your message of reconciliation. Give me the courage and the boldness to walk in it. Father, I speak over your sons and daughters who are committed to this message of reconciliation. I speak the peace of God. I speak the rest of God. I speak the strength of God. Father, I pray upon them right now that you'd give them courage and boldness to go up to people that they have offended and ask for forgiveness. I pray that you would embolden them with humility. I pray that you'd enable them to forgive offer, offer uh, repentance from the heart. I pray over somebody even here who has been offended and someone has come to them and they have been unable to release forgiveness. Father, I pray that you would do something supernatural in them, that they would be able to walk in obedience. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to pray over somebody else here who, who you've listened to this whole sermon and you're stuck at forgiveness. You've never been able to take that step and say, I want to go to the person who offended me, but I don't have the courage and boldness. You're like, I'm okay. I'm okay with just forgiving. But I want to pray for you right now that God will give you courage and boldness to go to the person who has offended you because sometimes they don't know. If you're a personality type like me, sometimes we don't know that we offend people. And you ask God to move you into that space and say, I want to be reconciled because you've been operating like things are okay, but they're not really okay. I wanna pray for courage and boldness for you. Father, I wanna pray for this person. I wanna pray, Father, that you'd fill them with courage and boldness to go up to the person that offended them. I wanna pray that you give them the right words, not to harm them, not just to um, confront them, but to bring reconciliation, that they will be able to share their heart openly and vulnerably, but at the same time, you will bring healing. I want to pray, Father, that your spirit would move in and through every a space where this sermon is being heard, in every Mavono campus, and I speak a release of your blessing, of your favor, of your joy, of your spirit upon us, and I wait with expectation for you to do so. The word that was spoken over us by our senior pastor was that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what the Lord has in store for us. I'm excited because I feel like as we let go of, of offense, we can walk into the space that God wants us to be. Listen, me, I'm getting ready for what God is going to do. I'm getting ready for breakthrough. I'm getting ready for deliverance. And I trust that God will do so. So I want to leave you today with a word of blessing. And this is the blessing I want to leave you with from 2 Corinthians 2, 18. It says, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of re reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. He has committed us to the message of reconciliation. Father, I pray for every ambassador hearing me right now, that Father, you would embolden them to become messengers of reconciliation. I speak your, your hand, I speak your strength, I speak your armor upon them to be bold and courage, courageous to become ambassadors of reconciliation. And then I wanna pray for somebody who is hearing this message, who says, I wanna engage with what's happening, but you've not accepted Christ in your heart. You want to move in this path of reconciliation. You know that this is what is needed, but you haven't accepted Christ. The first thing you need to do is invite, uh, receive the forgiveness from God. And I want to invite you into this space of salvation. If this is you, I want to encourage you right on the chat, get in touch with us so that we may pray with you and connect with you. Father, I thank you for this man, this woman that is hearing me right now. I want to pray, Father, that as they surrender and repeat these words after me, that you would surround them with your love and they would experience your forgiveness. Let us say this prayer with me right now. Father, I accept you into my heart. I confess 
that you are my Lord and Savior. I ask for forgiveness. And I receive you as my Lord and Savior today. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your healing. I receive your restoration. And I walk into the space that you desire for me to walk into. In Jesus' name I pray and all God's people say, Amen, amen, amen. I'm so excited that we're finishing this series of No Offense. I'm excited because we're walking into the space and the destiny that God is calling us to walk into as a community. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what the Lord has in store for us as the community that God loves. God is going to do a great thing in and through us, even as we walk in blessing and in obedience. I want to speak the word of Jude 24, 25 over you. It says, to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you and live offense free.